The other thing has been to um, overcome the, the notion that uh, in the 1990s and the early part of this century, in this country, that the only way to write about wine was to write tasting notes. And to me, um, tasting notes have always been um, counterproductive. They don't, they don't tell you how a wine tastes. Um, they are useful as sort of uh, individual mnemonic devices. If I, want, I can write some notes so I can remember my own experience of this wine. But if you were to compare, and I did this for, for a book I wrote, if you were to compare uh, tasting notes from different critics uh, about the same wine, they're totally different. So how do you, what does it mean? What, what does it mean when some person, one person says strawberry and the next person says gooseberry and the third person says fig compote? It doesn't really mean anything. So I, had, I wanted to think of a better way to communicate uh, uh, about wine. And, and the first thing I, I realized for myself is that describing all those aromas and flavors is really the least interesting thing you can do. It's, uh, it doesn't, it, it just makes it sound as if you know what you're talking about. Um, and really, it's, uh, if you're gonna be talking about a particular wine, you have to speak more generally. Uh, you can talk about the structure, you can talk about the uh, acidity or sweetness, hopefully not using those uh, uh, jargon or industry terms, but, but to, you can put it in more um, accessible terms. But um, there are other ways to inspire people to, to be interested in wine. Uh, by telling the story of, of, of people, places, the role wine has had in their culture, how things have developed uh, as they have, um, and, and also to talk about my own experiences, not, uh, not in a, in, as a role model, but hopefully just as a, as inspiration in, in the sense of one, this is the way one person experiences wine joyfully and, and with great pleasure, and with curiosity.